Plate tectonics is the leading theory behind describing the large-scale motions of continental and oceanic crust over time. These processes, processes have been happening continuously since tectonic process began on Earth over 3 billion years ago. Plate tectonics is usually talked about in relationship to phenomena such as continental drift, volcanoes, earth, and earthquakes. In order to understand plate tectonics, it is important to understand the motivations for the development of the theory and the evidence for it. So the motivations. Throughout the history of humanity, specifically since the invention of geology, there have been specific phenomena that had puzzled scientists for generations, such as tsunamis, volcanoes, and earthquakes. The explanations for these phenomena had usually been delegated to the realm of theology. When scientists first tried to make hypotheses for one of these phenomena, they did not make a lot of sense and often could not explain the details of each phenomena. Most importantly, each of these phenomena had completely different explanations with no common cause. As is common among scientists, geologists set out to find a grand unified theory of geology, which could explain all of these phenomena with a single base theory. The first step towards simultaneously unlocking these mysteries came in 1912, when the meteorologist Alfred Wegener described in his book The Origin of Continents and Oceans, where he noticed that the continents looked like they could be fit together to form a single massive continent. He aptly predicted that the continents arose from Earth's mantle and floated across its surface, likening them to icebergs of low-density granite floating on a sea of denser basalt. How does plate tectonics work? So Earth is made of multiple shells. The primary ones are the crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. The lithosphere is the outermost shell of the Earth, composed of the crust and the portions of the upper mantle that behave elastically on timescales of thousands of years or greater. Over 4 billion years ago, or only 100 million years after the formation of the Earth, a solid crust formed over the liquid mantle. Ever since then, through the process of convection, the rocky outer core will sink into the mantle through subduction, which will soon be replaced by the formation of new oceanic crust along divergent margins by seafloor spreading. The silicate-rich continental crust are less dense than the silicate-poor oceanic crust, causing the oceanic plates to subduct under the continental crust. Further support for this hypothesis came from matching rock formations along South America's east coast and Africa's west coast. Even more confirmation arose from finding similar fossils of species in both places that could not have flown or been transported otherwise between the two places, only by walking. Later geologists continue finding more and more evidence to support this. A key type of evidence they continued to find were similar geological structures on two separated continents. By looking at exposed rock formations from millions of years ago, it was possible to determine that millions of years ago, or hundreds of millions of years ago, these separated continents were one. By calculating and measuring the implications of their discoveries, they determined that this would take billions of years to occur, making the Earth much older than previously thought. During this time, more evidence was found that would be explained by plate tectonics. Volcanoes, for one, were realized to be from where tectonic plates were diverging or converging. Identical mountain ranges were found on adjacent but, but separated continents, indicating that they were once together. Fault lines and rifts were located to be the borders of these tectonic plates. Earthquakes are caused by geological faults, where neighboring plates intersect and rub against each other. As predicted by Alfred Wet Wegener, Continental crust was found to be silicate-rich, while oceanic crust was silicate-poor. Now, on plate tectonics, while championed to be the grand unified theory of geology, cannot explain everything. For example, there is the space problem, which is the problem of how are granite magma chambers emplaced in the crust. Currently, plate tectonics cannot explain this. In addition, plate tectonics is unable to describe what the structures and locations of the magmatic systems that might cause supervolcanoes and where they emerge from and how they operate. And finally, 
plate tectonics cannot explain the viscosities and densities of the magma chambers and the details of magma migration. But overall, plate tectonics is a very successful way to explain the geological structures we see today. However, these discoveries had implications that were strictly against what were common beliefs at the time, specifically religious views. In light of this, theologians tried to come up with a theory that would allow for the following features. That the Earth is 6,000 years old and was made divinely for at most six days. But how could they explain this? What would cause the topology of the Earth to be the way it is only after 6,000 years? Using what is called flood geology, creationists attempted to interpret and reconcile the geological features of the Earth by explaining it as an effect from the Great Flood in the Book of Genesis. This flood geology incorporates creationist explanations of the sequence of the rock strata we observe and shows that fossils are evidence of past flooding, not millions of years of weathering. Now, the mountains, the Grand Canyon, and erratic boulders were in erratic boulders, excuse me, were all caused from extreme weathering by the flood a few thousand years ago. Now, this has many faults to it. For example, this does not explain earthquakes, new volcanoes, and new geological developments in modern times. Currently, they say that all of these are directly caused by God. Additionally, the existence of a large flood, even if the, even if there were one, would not explain billions of years of geological development in only 40 days. However, there is no evidence of a flood like this 5,000 years ago. An al another alternative to plate tectonics are whole earth decompression dynamics. Now this claims that there's no mantle convection. Instead, the earth was originally a Jupiter-like gas planet and all of this gas was packed, you know, hundreds of times the mass of the Earth is packed on top of it, crushing and squeezing the Earth into some kind of unknown material. Having the mass of Jupiter around Earth would put immense pressure on the young Earth, crushing the solid part to 64% of its current radius. The same compression required to yield a closed, contiguous continental shell. Once the gaseous shell was blasted away from the Earth during the Sun's Titari phase, the Earth began to decompress. This decompression would explain many of the phenomena we see today. For example, fault lines and mid-ocean ridges would be merely cracks from the Earth's expansion. And earthquakes are cracks from the Earth's decompression. Volcanoes form from secondary decompression cracks, where superheated volcanoes, or excuse me, where superheated and compressed basalt can make its way to the surface. But there are are some problems with this one as well. It does not explain the measured motions of tectonic plates in subduction zones. And also, imaging of lithosphere fragments within the mantle shows that the lithosphere gets consumed by the mantle through subduction, showing that there is likely subduction occurring. Another theory that contradicts plate tectonics is the flat earth theory. Flat earth theory suggests that the earth instead of a sphere in space around the sun, is instead actually a flat plane in space. Now the flat earth, now flat earth does not have evidence exactly, but proponents of the theory claim that modern images of the earth being round are CGI composites made by the government and other conspiratorial bodies to influence and control its citizens. Now this one, has some faults to it too because it doesn't actually explain any of the currently found evidence instead it's just claiming that all of the evidence that has been found for supporting the other theories have been doctored in order to control the minds of the people now while all of these have faults only plate tectonics is able to explain the movement of the continents the way that they have been and can explain current developments that we see with volcanoes and earthquakes and can also explain the distribution of silicates that we see around the earth. Therefore, I think plate tectonics is the best explanation we have and is the best candidate for the grand unified theory of geology.